episode 58. Hey, this is John Lee Dumas of EO Fire, and you're listening to Who Did That Voice, where we take an in-depth look at voiceovers. Finally, warmer weather is here, and there is no better time than right now to book your vacation getaway with 3D Travel Company. Head on over to our website at www.whodidthatvoice.co and click the Book Now button on the left-hand side. They give a complimentary quote so you can get an idea of what it will cost to take your summer vacation. For a limited time, Who Did That Voice listeners can receive a Disney gift card for qualifying Disney and Universal trips, booked and traveled by the end of 2017. Hurry and book today so you can travel away. Welcome to Who Did That Voice, the show where we take an in-depth look at voiceover. And now, here's your host, Trenton Larkin. Hey, you guys, this is a special shout out to all my listeners around the world. Who Did That Voice is now heard in over 78 different countries, and I can't thank you guys enough. Here in the USA and abroad, thank you for listening to Who Did That Voice. Keep listening and sharing with your friends. Hey everyone, I just wanted to say a quick thank you to my special guest wife, Bonnie Bartlett, who was on the phone call with us during our interview. She and her husband are super sweet. They've been married 60 plus years. Bonnie is best known for her role as Ellen Craig on St. Elsewhere, and our special guest today that's featured on the interview played her fictional husband on St. Elsewhere as one of the doctors on that medical drama series. And the role that Bonnie is best known for me is the character Grace Snyder from Little House on the Prairie, for those of you familiar with that show. I grew up with it myself. Grace ends up marrying Isaiah Edwards, who was uh, Charles Engel's best friend, and later Grace becomes Grace Snyder Edwards once she gets married. She played a super sweet role, and we don't talk about it today, but I just wanted to acknowledge her amazing 60 plus year career and the fact that both her and her husband in 1986 both won Emmy Awards on the same night. This is super huge, guys, because they became the first married couple to accomplish this feat since Alfred Lunt and Lynn Fontaine did back in 1965. And to date, I don't believe any other couple has won an Emmy Award on the same night. So a super special thank you to Bonnie Bartlett and my special guest today for making episode 58 amazing. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to the show. Today's special guest voiced Kit on Knight Rider. All these weird gadgets, you think they'd give you a radio? What would you like to hear? What the hell was that? I am the voice of Knight Industry 2000's microprocessor. K-I-T-T for easy reference. A kit if you prefer. Today's special guest also played Mr. Feeney on Boy Meets World. You see, it's not enough to leave school and just desire to succeed in this cold, cruel world. Because then you simply become a part of it. You must also have the desire to change it. Unfortunately, we live in a society where they tell us we have to look a certain way. So we're all under pressure to live up to unrealistic expectations. If you let people's perception of you dictate your behavior, you will never grow as a person. But if you leave yourself open to experience, despite what others think, then you will learn and grow. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hello. Hello, is this Bonnie? Yes. Hey, this is Trenton Larkin. How are you doing, ma'am? Oh, yes. How are you? I'm doing excellent. It's wonderful to hear your voice. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get Bill for you. Thank you, ma'am. I'll probably stay on the line because sometimes he has to... Bill, this is a gentleman that wants to talk to you, please. He has a podca podcast, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Trenton? Is it Trenton? Yes, ma'am. Like New Jersey. Trenton, New Jersey. Yeah. Trenton. Like Trenton, New Jersey. There he is. Hello. This is Bill Daniels. How you doing, Mr. Daniels? Fine. And you are Trenton? Yes, sir. My name is Trenton Larkin. Okay. So what can I do for you, Trenton? Well, I just wanted to talk with you a little bit about your career and uh, about your book. Sure. Well, Mr. Daniels, the very first question I like to ask my special guests is, you know, who was the young boy William growing up into the man that he became? And how did you get into acting? And more specifically, how did you get into voice acting? He, you know, he's written this book mm -hmm. and it's about his entire career. And it's, it goes from vaudeville way, way back when he was a little boy all the way up, you know, through today. 
It's a lot of years and a lot of work. <laughs> well, I absolutely love vaudeville. And how did you get into acting at such a young age? Uh, an ambitious mother. <laughs> an ambitious mother. And, and you yes. started at a very young age, your wife said. That's right. Yeah, my sister and I were like a song and dance team. And uh, we hooked up with uh, a columnist of the Daily Mirror who ran a, a bunch of kids uh, to perform various places like the Elks Club or the Armory or this place and that place. And my sister and I went along and uh, did that for, oh, I'd say three or four years. Wow. When you were, how old were you when you started that, Bill? Well, I don't know exactly. Yeah. I think I was probably eight or nine. Probably eight when you started doing that. Your mom had you dancing yeah. when you were, what, four? Yeah. Yeah. Goodness yeah. gracious. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's so young. She, she, was a, a, she was a showbiz mom. Absolutely. Very much like Gypsy, the mother in Gypsy. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, Mr. Daniels, tell us a little bit about your book. I know it kind of covers a little bit of what we've discussed so far with your up upbringing in vaudeville and theater. Um, but tell us a little bit about this new wonderful book called William Daniels, There I Go Again, How I Came to Be Mr. Feeney, John Adams, Dr. Craig, Kit, and many others. Yeah. Well, the title kind of in, uh, uh, includes uh, answers to your question about. Uh, I, I wrote about uh, Mr. Feeney, who has become very popular, uh, Dr. Craig from St. Elsewhere, and uh, what was the other one? 1776, John yeah. Adams. Oh, yeah, John Adams in 1776. Uh, I don't know uh, what to say about it, except uh, it's a part of my life, and uh, I sat down one day and started to write about it. It's got everything in it. It's got everything in it. I mean, there's, there's no way for, for him to be able to uh, give you all of it, but it's... Oh, no, no. <laughs> it starts with vaudeville, and then it goes to radio, and then television, and then theater. <laughs> you went into the theater when you were about 14, right, Bill? Uh, yes, yes, in Life with Father on Broadway. Uh, you could tell them about that, how you got that. That's kind of a fun story. Oh, uh, my mother, uh, my showbiz mother, who wanted her kids to be in show business, always looked at the uh, papers to see what was going on in New York, and she would see, uh, um, at this one point, she saw that uh, they were looking for boys in a, a show called Life with Father. And so... Uh, she called me, and I was on a date with my girlfriend, um, <laughs> which my mother didn't even know about. And uh, she said, I want you to go over this place. I said, well, I, I don't know where it is. And she said, look it up in the phone book. I go over. It turned out to be Oscar Searle. And I told the girl, hey, wait a minute. It's only going to take me a minute. But it didn't. Uh, I got in to see Mr. Searle, and that was kind of a funny thing because he said, have you uh, done any theater? I said, no. Um, off Broadway? No. Uh, well, school theater? I said no. No theater at all. Or radio? No, no. I don't think you'd ever seen a play. No, I'd never seen a play. Oh wow! And pretty soon, Mr. Serlin started to laugh, and he said, "You know, you remind me when I came to New York." And so we got along swell. And he said that we're, we're reading boys over at the uh, at the theater. The Empire Theater. Uh, the Empire Theater. And uh, why don't you go over there and uh, and tell them I sent you. So I went over, and I didn't have an appointment, but I went in and told them that Mr. Serlin sent me. And uh, they uh, read me. Uh, I read, uh, I had never seen a play, and I certainly had never seen uh, the sides that uh, uh, constitute uh, the dialogue in the play. So I got a laugh when I started reading one character, John, and then Clarence came in, and I read that too when I wasn't supposed to, but I, I wasn't watching which names. I was just reading whatever <laughs> came in front of me. Yeah. And they laughed, and they said, okay, uh, well, wh why don't you uh, bring your mother tonight uh, and see the show before uh, the road company goes out? I said, what is that? And he said, 
well, that's, you know, we have touring companies that tour uh, the cities in, in the States. I said, oh. So I went home and told her, and then we went to the theater, and that was the first time I'd ever been in a legitimate theater or seen a play. And I was going to be in one. Uh, it was kind of strange. <laughs> but it was kind of magical moment sitting in a box seat where they put us and saw this uh, curtain go up and the, all this bright light on the, on the stage. It looked like it was twinkling. And uh, that's, I thought it was very romantic. I thought it was very unusual and uh, I enjoyed watching it. And then I, uh, you know, I left to uh, do the road company and I didn't get too far until my mother called me and said, listen, Bill, you have to hand in your two-week notice. I said, why? She said, well, you just got a, a job. Your sister and you are going to be uh, um, performing on your own show. On, uh, I think it was NBC radio. And so I had to hand in my notice. And, uh, and uh, Mr. Serlin came by and said to me, you, Bill, you just handed in your notice? I said, yes, sir. Uh, you know, we've got this radio show that my sister and I, another one of us, worked in on that, he said. I see. He said, well, come see me when you get in New York. So I went and saw him, and they put me as a sta assistant stage manager and understudy for the two oldest boys in the New York company. And then pretty soon I was playing the second oldest and then the oldest. I was in it for two years, and that was my introduction to the theater. Well, that is fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing that, Mr. Daniels. I sure. believe you were also in uh, 1776, the Broadway production as well. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. That was much later. That's much much later. later, yes. <laughs> I played John Adams, which was a leading role in, uh, in 1776. And it was... Uh, That's like 19, what, 60 in the 60s? No, I think it's maybe 69 and then 70, right in there. 69 and 70. I'm not sure. Yeah. Anyway, uh, John Adams was a very uh, important uh, step for me. I uh, had oh, nine musical numbers. Uh, he was on the stage as a whole of the play, and, uh, and I was in it for a long time, and I enjoyed every moment of it, and it really was my introduction to playing a lead in a Broadway musical. But before that, even more important than that was doing the zoo story right. for, Ed, for Edward Albee's yeah. first play. Yeah. Have you ever heard of that play? What was it called? I'm sorry. The Zoo, zoo Story. I don't believe Edward I have. Albee's play, The Zoo Story. I don't believe his I first have. first play. Yeah, it was his first play. We did it off-Broadway. It was a tremendous success. And it's just these two uh, actors in it. Uh, and it was the first uh, of a double bill with uh, a Samuel Beckett play. At any rate, the zoo story sort of put me on the map in New York. Of course, it won a bunch of awards, and so did I. And, uh, and so it was important. It was a great play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, that's fantastic that you were able to do so much on stage. I know I did theater in high school, and, and it always did feel very magical to be out there on the stage for sure. Yes. Yes, there's, you know, there's the audience out there. They're a challenge. They're also invigorating. And uh, when you get a response from them, you feel real good. Well, you know, one of the other characters that you've played, uh, Mr. Daniels, that's meant a lot to me, and I know millions, if not billions of people around the world, is when you played Kit on Knight Rider. And um, how did you become involved with that project? Well, I had done a uh, um, movie of the week, me and Claudette, uh, what's her name, um, Peters. Oh, Bernadette Peters. Bernadette Peters. Oh, wow. And the producer uh, uh, kind of liked what we did, I guess, but uh, he called me after we had done it and said, uh, Bill, I have some material I'm going to take to New York and, uh, and uh, try to sell to the producers and the network. And would you come and read it? And I said, sure. And it was just a favor. I went over to Universal Studios here in Hollywood, and uh, I, he handed me this, and I looked at it, and I said, uh, this is the voice of a car? He <laughs> said, yeah. I said, I see. 
Okay. So I started reading it, and he said, could, uh, uh, Bill, excuse me, could you make it like a robot? I said, no. He said, no, no. <laughs> So I started reading some more. He said, how about, you know, that, that Ma Bell voice? I said, would you just please let me read it? He said, oh, okay. So I just read it my own voice, and, and he thanked me, and I went home. And about three weeks later, he said, listen, we've uh, sold it uh, to NBC, and uh, uh, we'd like you to do it. I said, well, you know, I'm doing St. Elsewhere. And they said, we know that. Uh, it's the same network. We'll work around your commitment that in St. Elsewhere. So I couldn't turn that down, two jobs at once. <laughs> so Fantastic. that's the way I did it. And uh, we did, I think, about four seasons of it. Well, that is awesome. I know Knight Rider was such an awesome show, and it's it's left such a long-lasting impact um, as it's, mm-hmm. you know, your characters come back on The Simpsons, of course, Knight Rider, the show itself, um, mm-hmm. and then in movies, The Benchwarmers and Knight Rider 2000, and you even got to be a part of some commercials and video games. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. it's, it's been really awesome. As a matter awesome. of fact, didn't we, didn't we run into it yesterday at that event? AT&T has still got a commercial going on for you. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. That uh, and Boy Meets World. Yeah. Yeah. And as far as Boy Meets World, um, Mr. Feeney was such a wonderful teacher, such a, um, he was stern, but he was loving at the same time. And he was so <laughs> educational. And, and I love that about him because he wasn't the typical teacher we see on screen. Um, how did that character come to be for you, Mr. Daniels? How did it come to be? Well, I don't know. It was written uh, by... Uh, the producer, Michael Jacobs, uh, and uh, he uh, he asked me to do it, and I turned it down, and he said, would you take a meeting with me? And I said, okay. He said, uh, why did you turn it down? I said, I didn't like what was written there. He says, it's going to be rewritten by tomorrow. Would you wait and, with this refusal until I rewrite it? And I said, yeah, I guess so. So he rewrote it, and it was ty- entirely different. And totally acceptable. I just didn't want it to be a foolish uh, a takeoff on a, a teacher. Uh, uh, teachers are terribly important to us. They're also underpaid, and I, I wanted it to be uh, treated with a, a certain respect. And he assured me that it would be, and it was. And so we were off to the races. Absolutely. Well, I, I love that you have such an appreciation for teachers as I do. Um, you know, they definitely are right. underpaid and they are, right. they are the people we charge with the responsibility to train and raise up our children, you know, when we're right. at work eight to five, you know, so right. um, I really appreciate the take that you had on it and the stance you had with not yeah. being willing mm-hmm. to do the project until he was uh, a motivational, yeah. inspirational individual willing to educate mm-hmm. the children and not some yeah. hard nosed teacher who really didn't care about them. So, right. Right. And, uh, you know, I know you've, you've been a part of some other amazing TV shows, just some one-offs and stuff with Battlestar Galactica or Galactica 1980. Um, and then you were also part of, um, a Star Trek, uh, Voyager episode where you played a computer, um, uh, called Allocation Alpha, and you were also on The Incredible Hulk as Dr. John Bonifant. So you've you've had such a, a wonderful career on theater and stage and TV, and um, it's just amazing to get to spend some time with you talking about all these wonderful projects and things you've been <laughs> a part of. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've been very fortunate. It's been, a, it's been a lovely career, and it's still going on, and uh, I'm grateful for that. And, uh, and there we are. Absolutely. Well, real quick before we go, Mr. Daniels, where can people yeah. find your book? How can they get a hold of a copy today? In a bookstore. Barnes and Noble. <laughs> Barnes and Barnes Noble. Noble has them. Uh, mm-hmm. If somebody wants a signed book, Bill kind of has a deal with uh, Book Soup okay. in Hollywood. And if people ask, requ- ask for requests, a copy of the book that Bill will sign, he will go over and do that because he has a kind of deal with them and he goes over and, and signs a bunch of them at once. So that's Book Soup in Hollywood. Fantastic. And then any Barnes & Noble store has them. Wonderful. Barnes and & And I believe it's also on Amazon. Okay, absolutely. Yeah, look online for it as well. But if uh, you want a signed book, you have to go to a bookstore. Okay, absolutely. Okay. Well, yeah. Bonnie and... Um, William, thank you so much for your time today. 
And uh, sure. I wanted to say, I think the legacy that you two have together for being married now, I believe it's 66 years. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. That is super <laughs> amazing it's so wonderful to see a couple that's loved each other for such a long time it's something we don't see in today's society much anymore and i just wanted to uh to say happy 66 years you guys and uh let's hope for another 10 (laughs) okay thank you you guys have a wonderful day thanks so much you too okay bye-bye now bye-bye we wanted to know if you had anything else left to teach us Believe in yourselves. Dream. Try. Do good. You coming with us, Mr. Feeney? <laughs> you gonna sneak up on us in Central Park or something? <laughs> no, I shall remain here. No, you'll always be with us. As long as we live, okay? (sighs) I love you all. Class dismissed. Well, everyone, I sure hope you enjoyed today's episode with William Daniels, the voice of Kit from Knight Rider, and Mr. Feeney from Boy Meets World. You know, I'm going to speak from the heart for a moment because this episode meant so much to me. It was beyond an honor and a pleasure to speak with both Mr. Daniels and his lovely bride, Bonnie Bartlett, as it was obvious that these two are not just two well-established and well-known actors, but they are both a couple in love, and it was obvious in the way that they talked with me during the conversation. I thought it was absolutely cute that when I mentioned how many years they had been married, Miss Bartlett just glowed and smiled so hard, and it came across the air And it made me smile, you guys. Um, They are the cutest couple. And this experience for me was beyond amazing. I can't thank them enough for the valuable time that they allowed me to have to speak with them. And I hope you enjoyed it and it meant as much to you as it did to me. I believe that when you find love, you hold on to it and cherish it. Because there is nothing finer. And it may never come again. And that, my dears, is the most important thing that I could teach you. You know, a question you might ask yourself is, where can I listen to Who Did That Voice? That's an excellent question. You can hear us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, YouTube, and our website at www.whodidthatvoice.co. Click the Episodes tab and listen away. Well, everyone, that's all the time we have for this episode. Join us this Friday for our next special guest, Norm Spencer, the voice of Scott Summers, a.k.a. Cyclops from the 1992 X-Men animated series. You won't want to miss this episode. Hey, do you ask yourself who did that voice? Well, if you do, go to our website, www.whodidthatvoice.co, and click on the Episodes tab. Choose an actor, pick their name, and see pictures from the different characters they've voiced in their career. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you next time for more discoveries on Who Did That Voice.